Yo, it's your boy Austin Rutherford. Today we're talking about private money lending and getting private money to fund your real estate deals. Most people see this as like the unicorn thing in the real estate industry. But once you truly understand this and you understand the power of private money and you understand the conversations that you need to have, it will change the game for you. It'll, it'll take you from maybe wholesaling houses to then flipping houses and buying rental properties. It can create, help you create true wealth simply by just having access to private money. So that's what we're talking about here today. I built my entire business off of private money. My first deal I ever did was when I was 21 years old and I borrowed over $240,000 in private money to fund my first deal. Without private money, I never would have been able to get into the game. You know, I bought, renovate and sold at that house and I made over $103,000 profit on it. If I would have not been able to purchase it using private money and all I had and all I could have done was assigned it, I may have made 10 or $20,000 on an assignment fee versus $103,000 profit. Talk about, you know, game changing. 20 grand to 100 grand, 100 grand can make your business go a lot further, a lot faster. So, once you understand private money, you realize that private money is literally everywhere. So for all those people out there saying, well, you know, I'm too young or I'm too old or nobody's ever going to give me money or I don't have any experience or nobody's ever going to trust me. All those things are lies. Like I told you, I borrowed my first almost quarter million dollars at the age of 21 years old. I had no real estate experience. I had no business experience. I had no background whatsoever. So private money is a very real thing. So the process of private money is first, you obviously got to find the deal and then you got to start talking with private money lenders and then you got to negotiate the terms of the private money lenders money and then you buy, renovate and sell the house. So the number one biggest question that I get all the time is where do I find private money lenders? You can't just Google private money lenders because they're private. So pri private money lenders are literally individuals like you and I coming to an agreement for me to lend you money on your deal. So private money is everywhere, first thing. So you gotta go out and network with people and present opportunities to people. So you, to get private money, you gotta be in rooms where money's at. So when I go out to eat dinner, I go sit at the bar. I go to a steakhouse and I sit at the bar because I want to meet as many people as possible. When I go out and play golf, I go to a nice country club because I want to be around as, as many people as possible that have money. When I go to, to work out, maybe you go to an athletic club to, to put yourself around people that can afford to be at an, an athletic club. So you got to put yourself around people with money and then you got to have that conversation. The one little line that I use, so anytime you're talking with somebody, initiate a conversation and it always leads to, well, what do you do? So I'll ask them, you know, what do you do? They'll say, I'm a doctor. And then they'll ask me, well, what do you do? I say, I'm a real estate developer and I use other people's money to fund my deals. That intro right there, if they have any interest whatsoever in what private money is or private money lending is or how they can become a part of it, they'll be like, well, what, what, what do you mean you use other people's money? And you say, yeah, you know, we flip houses, we buy houses, we own rentals, whatever your business model is. We borrow money from individuals just like yourself to fund all of our real estate deals. And, you know, we, we pay double digit returns in some cases. And then right there, that's gonna spark that interest for them. You just gotta get them interested in learning more about what you can offer them. And the only way to do that is to by put yourself around those types of people and then actually have conversations with those types of people. And then another uh, you know, cool line to use in there, when you say those things, and if they like, you know, don't have interest or have interest, you can say, you know, do you, have, do you know anybody else? Do you, do you know anybody that would be interested in, in something like that? Do you know anybody that'd be interested in earning double digit returns? So you're right there, you're kind of like going past them and they're gonna be like, wait a minute, yeah, I'm interested. Or if they're not interested, they might tell you, you know, their buddy Joe might be interested or their friend Fred might already be doing private money lending. So asking that questions make them subconsciously like, yeah, me, I'd be interested. And then if not, they can, they can you know, point you in the right direction. And then the next question that I get is, well, how do they get money to lend to me? Most people think they need to have $500,000 cash sitting in their checkings account. That's not what you need at all. You know, if they have that money, that's super easy to lend. That's great. But the other ways of getting private money are like retirement accounts, IRA, self-directed retirement funds, 401ks. So self-directed retirement funds, they can lend those home equity lines of credits. They can borrow against their home and pay 4% and then you pay them 10% and then they're making money on money that's not even theirs in the first place. HELOCs, same thing, kind of like a home equity line of credit on multiple projects. Cash value life insurance policies. So if they've been paying into a cash value life insurance policy for a long time, they can 
can borrow against that and then lend you that money. And then obviously if they have money in their checkings or their savings account, they can access those funds to lend you as well. So they have a lot of ways to access money, not just having $100,000 sitting in their bank account. So you have to have that conversation with them to let them know of other opportunities and other ways that they can tap into money to then lend that money to you. You wanna know what the best way, the simple, easiest, best way to borrow money from private money lenders where they can access their money at? The best way is from getting a pile of cash from underneath their mattress and then them handing that pile of cash to you, all cash. No, I'm playing. Definitely don't do that. You're gonna get into some trouble probably by doing something like that. But realistically, for them to lend you money, they need to wire that money to the title company at closing. So the money has to be in a bank account of some sort. It can't just be cash under a mattress. Um, otherwise you're, you're gonna be in a really gray area, but the money has to be wired to the title company at closing. So then once you have somebody interested in possibly lending you money, um, then when you get an opportunity for them to lend money, and it is an opportunity, you're giving them an opportunity to invest with you, but you gotta give them like some sort of presentation, some sort of deal packet. So what we do is we give them a deal packet, which basically explains who I am, what the company's done over the last few years, some of previous deals that we've done. If you haven't done any deals, use example deals. Hey, these are deals that you know we, we look forward to doing. So about me, about the company, example deals, about the project. So what are the numbers on the project that you're presenting to them? And then how much money, what are you asking from them? How much money are you asking for? And what are you providing? What type of return interest rate are you gonna be providing them for investing in a deal with you. And then you can either you know, present this to them in person if you have a really good relationship, or you can send this to them through email and then ask them if it's something that they're interested in lending you money on. Then the next question is, well, what documents do they use? What contract do we have? Well, how do we make sure that the money's not just disappearing? So phenomenal question. So like I said, lenders take the position of banks. So if you've ever bought a personal house, when you bought the house, the lender had a mortgage on your property and you had to pay off the mortgage. And, and if you didn't, they would take the property from you. So same thing, you give your lender a mortgage on the property and then you give them a promissory note, which the promissory note basically says, hey, you know, I borrow blank amount of dollars from this lender and I agree to pay 10% interest and I agree to pay it back in 12 months. Whatever the terms of your agreement are, you give them a mortgage and you give them a promissory note, which is a promise for you to pay back to them the money that they lent you. And then they get a hazard policy insurance. So when you buy a house, you need insurance on the property. So then they just get named on the policy. So in case something happens, they get paid off as well. And then you get a title insurance policy. So when you buy the property, you make sure that there's nothing owed on the property. So when you buy it, you get an owner's title insurance policy, and then you get them a lender's title insurance policy. So if anything happens, if anything comes up on title, if there's any issues with the property, they're protected as well. So those are the four documents that they get when they lend money, a mortgage, a promissory note, a lender's title insurance, and a hazard insurance. So then when do they get paid? There's two ways of doing this. You can make monthly interest payments to them. So if they lend you $100,000 at 12% interest, it's $12,000 a year, meaning you pay them $1,000 a month in interest. So that's one way is making monthly interest only payments to them every single month, or you can structure the loan where they lend you the money and then you don't pay them the interest until you sell the house. So all the principal and interest accrues until you sell the house and then you pay them their money back. So if they lend you 100 grand at 12%, it's $12,000 a year. You buy the property, you renovate the property, you sell the property six months later. So you use their money for six months. Their payback would be the original $100,000 plus the $6,000 in interest. So when you sell the house, you would pay them back $106,000. So those are the two ways that lenders can get paid back. So high level overview of private money lending, you find the deal and then you find the lender, you agree to the terms, the lender funds the closing for you, funds the purchase and the rehab for you. You then go out and buy, renovate and sell this property. You do all the dirty work, the lender, all the lender does is just wire you the money. You buy, renovate and sell the property. And then when you sell it, the lender gets paid off and ideally, you just keep doing this over and over and over and over again, and that lender just continues to fund the deals for you as you pay them off. I know private money lending can be very overwhelming at the beginning. It can be very like, it's just so unknown. It's a super 
superficial thing. It's like the unicorn, like we talked about. Uh, but once you understand it, it becomes so much easier. Once you do it once, it's so much easier. I've borrowed over $15 million in my five-year real estate career from private money lenders because I became comfortable with talking about it. I'm comfortable with talking about money. And once you get to that point, hopefully this video provides some clarity to that, you'll be much more comfortable to have those conversations with private money lenders, and then you can raise more money, and then you can change your business and change your life with that. And the best part about this all is that you can live literally change somebody's life with this. Think about this. If somebody's invested in the stock market, okay, well, I'm shooting this during COVID-19. The stock market crashed 30%. It's coming back slowly, but if somebody had money invested with me, their money doesn't crash. Their money doesn't disappear. They don't lose money. The money that we pay them, the interest that, that we pay them is the same no matter what happens. So you can literally change people's lives with this. I've heard stories now when people lost that money, they were planning on retiring next year. Now they have to work an additional five years to make up the money that was lost. You're providing people with an opportunity to literally change their life. I've retired people quicker. So if somebody's earning, let's say 5% in the stock market and I pay them 10%, they literally double their retirement overnight, literally overnight. So I've retired people before. That's, that's one of the coolest feelings in the world. So you got to understand you are providing people with the opportunity of a lifetime and you can literally change somebody's life. So now that you know more about private money lending, go out there and start raising it. Don't be nervous to talk to people. Don't be shy to talk to people. You know enough about it right now that you can go and have those conversations with people to get people interested in lending you money. So do not be shy, do not be nervous. I've been there, I've done that. You have to take action and start talking with people and putting yourself in areas where you're around money and then start having those conversations. So. I appreciate you guys being here. Please make sure you hit that like button for me. YouTube loves the algorithm for the like. Hit the like button, drop a comment if you got any questions, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and then the bell so you can get notified as well. See you at the next one.